with me, Lord, we thank you for the unmerited kindness that you have shown to the undeserving in your mercy being lavished upon us and us receiving forgiveness of sins. And Lord, as we take some, now, take some time now to celebrate the Lord's table and partake in communion together, I pray that our hearts would just resonate with these truths of who you are and what you have done in the gospel. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, please be seated. This is the time in our service where we uh, take communion together. We celebrate the Lord's table and like to direct your attention to Ephesians chapter 3. If you don't have a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand. We have some men who would love to put a Bible in your hand. And as they make their way through the aisles, you can just uh, lift up your hand. They'll get one to you. And go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 3. In a moment, the men are going to bring uh, trays with a piece of bread and juice for each of us to take. And we know that the bread represents Christ's body that was crushed and the juice represents Christ's blood that was spilt on our behalf. And as we prepare our hearts to take the bread and the juice together and remember our Savior, I want you to consider with me some things from Paul's prayer that we see in Ephesians 3. And we'll start in verse 14. But we're really going to narrow in on verses 18 and 19 this morning. So Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. The greatest treasure that anyone could possess is not found in a thing, but is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And if you are a Christian, you abide in Christ and he abides in you. You possess this treasure. As Paul is praying for the Ephesian Christians, he has something on his mind in his prayer. And we're going to jump ahead to the punchline. Look at verse 18 again. It says that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. And then verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. Simply put, he wants them to know the love of Christ. And then he says, which surpasses knowledge. And you just have to pause for a moment at what feels a little bit like irony. Paul wants them to grasp and understand something that is far beyond comprehension. This isn't an impossible request, though. Paul is getting at something profound here. Paul wants the believer to understand at the deepest degree that which is far beyond the deepest understanding possible. You could sum it up this way. The depths of knowledge regarding the love of Christ is infinitely deep, but whatever depths is possible for you to go to, even if you can't get to the bottom, get as deep as possible in knowing the love of Christ. Why? Well, look again at verse 19. So that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. What does it mean to be filled up to all the fullness of God? It's to come to understand the love of Christ so that we're filled with all that God wants to pour into us and fill us up with. That we would be useful for our Savior the love of Christ is on a different plane with every other love ever demonstrated in all of the history of mankind. For those in Christ, Jesus, in love, chose to lay down his life for us. 
when we lived in a perpetual state of hatred and rebellion against him. He chose to redeem us in his love while we were godless, helpless enemies. He humbled himself to a lower degree than any other person or creature ever could while the sinners he humbled himself to save seek to perpetually exalt themselves. Mankind is in a perpetual grasping at equality with God state, and yet Jesus didn't regard it something to be grasped, that is equality with God, but in contrast with man who constantly exalts himself, Jesus humbled himself. He doesn't leave or forsake us when we are prone to wander and to leave the God that we love. Jesus willingly became the man of sorrows on the cross while we perpetually fight against and seek escape from any temporal sorrows that we endure in this life. We question him as to why we endure our sorrows, and yet we rarely question why he would become the man of sorrows. He took upon himself the just, right punishment of holy wrath for all who would believe for all time in love. He knew no sin, yet was made sin for us in love. No love ever demonstrated by humans in all of history even comes close to the perpetual, unfailing, unending, unyielding love that Jesus shows to those who are his. What a gift. And this morning, as we take the bread and the cup, we get to remember our Savior who has saved us through his love at the cost of his own life on the cross. What a gift that we have received in Jesus. For those who are his, this is a wonderful time to be sobered, to be filled with thankfulness, to rejoice in what we have in Christ. To know him is better than anything else, the richest treasure that we could possess. If you are not a Christian, if you are not in Christ, if you don't know this love of which I have just spoken, and we would plead with you, I plead with you, talk to someone. You, you have to talk with somebody this morning more specifically about Jesus. I would love to chat with you about him, to speak with you about him. But we would ask that you would not take the bread and the cup, the juice, at this time, as this is a time for believers who are rejoicing in their Savior to remember what he has done personally and specifically for them in the gospel, on the cross. So we just ask you to pass that tray by and speak with one of us. If you are in Christ, then we ask you to take... And remember, the men are going to come and pass the bread in the cup. And when your heart is prepared, take them and remember our great Savior, Jesus. Then I'll come back up and we'll pray in just a few, excuse me, just a few moments.